Hi, everyone. Susan Brady here. Thank you for joining me today. So today I want to talk about aspirin and whether it is friend or foe to our body and our bones. So taking low dose aspirin has been a very popular recommendation for years because it's believed it helped prevent cardiovascular events like heart attacks or strokes. And then just a few weeks ago, there was a study in scientific reports suggesting that daily low dose aspirin may also be associated with higher bone mineral density. So what the results of this study showed was significantly higher bone mineral density in the hip, femoral neck, and lumbar spine in people taking low dose aspirin compared to non-aspirin users. So what is it about aspirin that makes it a popular prevention measure for your heart? And now, according to this study, may actually benefit your bones as well. So one reason why aspirin may help in regards to stroke and heart attack is that aspirin has properties that help to thin the blood and prevent clots from developing. But aspirin is also a really strong anti-inflammatory and it works by blocking the production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. And in a very broad description, prostaglandins are chemicals secreted by the body in response to injury or inflammation. So if we have an injury or develop inflammation, prostaglandins are released. And this is absolutely important and absolutely necessary when it comes to the healing process. However, this natural response can sometimes lead to excessive and chronic production of prostaglandins, which then can be detrimental to our tissue and contribute to diseases tied to chronic inflammation, like heart disease and osteoporosis. Now, in the bone, there is a balanced production of prostaglandins that can result in healthy bone remodeling. However, in postmenopausal women, estrogen deficiency can increase prostaglandin production in the bone, it can throw off that balance, which then stimulates excessive bone resorption and leads to bone loss. So low dose aspirin, because it can block the excessive production of these pro-inflammatory prostaglandins can protect your bones um, and reduce bone loss. So in the last few months, um, you may have heard about the recent warnings in the news indicating that aspirin may actually have more health risks than benefits for some people. And like any medication, aspirin has side effects. And one of the big ones is irritating the stomach lining and triggering gastrointestinal upset and GERD and acid reflux and ulcers and bleeding. And because it thins your blood, it can also be very dangerous for people who are at high risk for bleeding. So for all those reasons, the newest guidelines on taking low dose aspirin is advising against taking aspirin as a preventative measure for reducing the risk of cardiovascular events. So how can we get these beneficial anti-inflammatory properties that aspirin provides us without taking aspirin? Fortunately, there are some really great natural alternatives to aspirin that can be just as effective in reducing pro-inflammatory prostaglandins that support our bone and our heart health. So one of my favorites is bromelain. And bromelain is a compound derived from pineapple, and it gets its anti-inflammatory effects by reducing prostaglandin formation. And bromelain modulates prostaglandins as well as another chemical hormone called thromboxane, which can cause blood clots. So it affects both inflammation as well as coagulation of the blood. Quercetin, which is a plant flavonoid and stinging nettle leaves 
have also been shown to reduce the production of prostaglandins in the body. And then um, another substance, pycnogenol, also referred to as pine bark extract, has been shown to reduce platelet aggregation as effectively as aspirin without increasing the risk of bleeding. So it has the same um, reduction in blood clotting effects that aspirin does. And then finally, omega-3 fatty acids can decrease the production of inflammation, inflammatory prostaglandins and, um, inflammatory prostaglandins, and therefore also reduces inflammation. In terms of diet, one of the most important things you can do to squelch excessive inflammation is increase consumption of foods high in omega-3 fatty acids. So fatty fish and walnuts and chia seeds and flax seeds. You also want to reduce your intake of omega-6 fatty acids, particularly in the form of vegetable oils, specifically soybean and safflower and sunflower and sesame oil and corn oils. Excessive intake of these oils, which are found everywhere in processed foods and many people cook with them, they are linked to the production of inflammatory prostaglandins and are associated with inflammation as well as increased blood pressure and blood clot formation. And then some other foods and herbs that can assist with lowering prostaglandins are things like garlic and turmeric and pomegranate. So the nutrients in these foods are known for inhibiting prostaglandin production and lowering the overall levels of prostaglandins in your body. So, the, so including these foods in your diet can be really beneficial for reducing inflammation. Now, if you are currently taking low dose aspirin as a preventative measure, please don't just stop without consulting your healthcare practitioner. But do know that there are some safe and natural alternatives that can be just as beneficial for reducing inflammation in the body and therefore supporting your bones and your heart health. Thank you for joining me. Please reach out if you have any questions, concerns, comments, and as always, wishing you a healthy day and a healthy rest of your week.